uh, late afternoon or good evening, whatever you enjoyed uh, referring to. Um, um, unfortunately, the first guy in the, it was not available, so I am, I'm about to start the first thing here. Is everyone on board with me when I, in terms of hearing and everything? Right, so um, uh, the session today I'm going to explain is that uh, my experience of working with uh, digital activism and working with the government not directly many times, but indirectly, and then uh, we had to switch this role on and off uh, many times. And uh, for those who, basically m most of you who don't know about me, it's, uh, I'm a self-made entrepreneur who started some uh, companies in difficult markets, bringing difficult projects. This dates back, on, uh, back in 10 years ago when uh, uh, the first uh, online company bringing the open education to uh, to uh, specific countries and later on starting some ventures in uh, different uh, markets around Europe. So kind of my path and experiences uh, starts from the upper Estonia down to Albania and on the, on the horizontal line starts from the uh, San Francisco down to Tokyo. Um, I, was, I'm born in, I was born in Kosovo, some uh, around the 80s, early 80s, and I moved around the Europe uh, uh, recently. And I always were thrilled about the uh, potential that the, Euro, the new Europe is bringing to the, uh, to, the, to the market here. So, as you might know, the, my country was in a, in, a, in a war in 99, and then the uh, majority of people actually lost their jobs and their, their, uh, their opportunities, and everybody wanted to actually get access back to the, to the, to the labor market. So, the idea that uh, uh, myself, together with some awesome guys, came that we should start an open data project by bringing the all local IT knowledge into the Britain and for the, and the, for the first time in the local languages, which is in, in, uh, in Kosovo is uh, Albanian and Serbian. So the first project that we initiated all by our own is an open ECDL. You, many of you are familiar with ECDL. So I can explain it kind of this way. ECDL stands for European Computer Driving License, which means the driving license that you get for your car, just for the computer, which means you can navigate, pull on the gears of the computer, anything. That translates into the start creating like a basic information uh, technology steps up to manipulating with Excel sheet. So now that this was interesting in the market which 50% of people seek employment and seek training on the IT skills. And when you have this kind of demand, you always have the early players and then you always have the government players who actually feed each other on this relation. So what, end, what ended happened is that uh, you have a training center opening up day after a day. In the country where actually unemployment is super high, you need this training, you need English courses, you need the IT courses, let's start training offering the IT course and the uh, computer courses. So then, we took another approach. We said, like, why don't we try to create this in an open environment where actually everybody has access in a transparent, connected society, open access to the content. So we built this platform, which contains all of the modules of the uh, compute, basic computer up to the PowerPoint and you know Excel sheets and uh, all the access, and launched it online for free. This was back in 2007. And everybody was kind of not expecting that such, such a, from the, from the infrastructure that was existing, something like this will come out. So when we launched, we used the current broad, uh, broadband connection that was pretty good. So we started to do the viral marketing as much as we can by going to, to the, to first of all, word of mouth, and then later on to the, any TV show that we were invited, our team, we were just mentioning this over and over, and then within Five months to seven months of the launch, we ended up having like around 25,000 users using. So entire country, the early adopters were actually the ones that actually uh, started to use this, this platform. With this also comes responsibilities and interesting things. We start receiving threats from the public sector because basically we were ruining their business model on how they could take big te public tenders for the government to train massive teachers, students, and everybody who wanted to have it. And we kept fighting. The more threats we had, the more we published, we more, we more, the more we were aware, but we went to start to hang out around the government by telling them, like, guys, you know, if 
you don't step in this time, this will be closed. You will be the shame of everything what we built so far. And the government, of course, what does it to you? Turns you away, as in any other initiative that you start. But then we started to do the hint. What if we speak to the opposition? Because, because the governments always change. So the election were coming the next year. So we started to hang out with opposition leaders and tell them, like, if you get elected, if you promise that you were going to take this platform, make it national, every school in, in the country will have it, we're going to give it to you for free. The coin slipped, flipped in the right side. We gave to the, to the government the, the, the portal. Now the portal, it's a, it's a mandatory course for extracurricular activities in every single uh, uh, school in the country. And by the time we finished the first year, <laughs> we still had, we were knocking the door of the government by telling them that, you know, listen guys, you know, we built so far, we give it away it's because we believe that in openness, but you have to maintain it. And if we were not stepping in to bring the, all the cost and all the, the continuous IT support for the platform, basically this will go away. So we made a deal that uh, we spread out the content more into community by, by actually giving the content open to the Wikipedia articles, open to the, to the local media, to everywhere, so the people actually got responded back and started to, to cover the fees for the, all the projects that we did in this, in this case. So, in overall, the access to information was kind of a tick that we wanted to fight and we completed. So today, this open ECDL is in all language, all, all the classrooms in every computer lab in the schools, has more than 30,000 online users daily coming into it, and uh, in 2008, we won the best practice award by the European Commission by influencing the most technology per country in uh, Europe. Then we thought, what could we do next? And these things have slightly changed because when you have a troubled country which went through tough times and then you want to actually bring the best of, uh, out of it in the most, in the most like, say, high level according to the standards of, of your neighbor first and then going around the Europe, you have to think about what could we do something that could improve the life of people easier but in terms of like help them in education, help them actually win-win by also promoting the, their own country and their own destiny. So we started with the citizen engagement and launching the Wiki Academy. So what Wiki Academy does is basically invites all the scholars to come and write new content. Not current existing, not to engage into the wars in the, in the Wikipedia and who was there first and who was there first before or religious aspect or let's talk about the Palestine or anything uh, like that. No, the rules are that you just have to start creating new articles, learn how to reference, contribute to the web and contribute to, the mo to, to Wikipedia to open access to education for majority of people. So we invited professors, artists, government ministers, open source activists, diplomats, founders of Wikimedia communities from Germany, United Kingdom, Sweden, Serbia, Macedonia, Kosovo and Albania. They all were in the same room trying to create a new content. And the new content was about new things. Like there was no article in Wikipedia about theater in Kosovo, for example, or festivals in the Balkans or something that relates not with sensitive issues but more with a cultural artistic approach which was not existing. I travel around Germany and the uh, US and every time I mention the Balkans, it always gives this negative image of the, of the conflict. So we wanted to uh, put the spin on and try to produ produce as much as possible articles. But we had to make some funny rules in order to be engaging. So. No wiki wars game, and if you want knows what a wiki wars game is. So to explain it really shortly, wiki wars is it's an interesting concept which I recommend to all the Wikipedians to and all everybody to use it. So let's say we are in Croatia and uh, I'm battling with I'm I'm competing with one of you guys, and uh, our task is find a path between Adriatic Sea and let's say. Peter Tchaikovsky, the Russian composer. So Wikiwars is mainly like, with a set of time, we have to link over the Wikipedia and who, has, who goes fastest to the Tchaikovsky from the article of, of the uh, Adriatic Sea as actually is the winner. So this game actually improves a lot of people to gain knowledge more for the many other things. So let's say, 
from Adriatic coast, you go to, so, so let's say Adriatic coast is surrounded by, you know, like Albania, Croatia, all, uh, all of other countries. So you press Croatia, then you go to, Croatia is in Europe, you press Europe, then Europe, uh, then you go music in Europe, and then uh, you press Russia, music in Russia, classical music in Russia, done, Tchaikovsky. So this path, whoever goes fastest, maybe the, my path was the longest, but somebody else goes fastest actually is the winner. So we did this at the end by engaging people constantly to play this, uh, this game on the, on the Wiki Academy. But nothing rules more than the rules of the Fight Club. So we took the Fight Club rules and we switched into the Wiki Academy rules. So first rule was you do talk about editing club. So we kind of create this editing club. Second rule is you do talk about editing club and if someone says I'm done or goes live, the editing is over. Only two articles per team, only one editing at the time, no plagiarism, no bad references. Editing will go as long as they have to do. And if this is your first night at the editing club, you have to edit. And everybody within 48 hours, the guys that I mentioned just before, started creating really cool content such as things that never exist before, classical music, Kosovo film festivals, teacher, Katarina Josipi, a famous actor, nobody knows about her. And 59 articles were created in Wikipedia within 48 hours. Of course, this was also always had the, uh, the support from the, from the public, from everybody, because it was coming from the citizen engagement straight to the, to the content creation of, uh, of everything. We also uh, opened the uh, admission for the pictures. So this picture on the top, I never been there. It looks awesome. I didn't even know that this place exists <laughs> before I actually saw the picture. And we rewarded the guys uh, who submitted. And more than 1,000 pictures were submitted over and over to, to, to compete and to get. And now, for example, the government website, when they use pictures of presenting something, they're starting slowly to use the pictures that are accredited by the, by the um, Creative Commons, they, they use uh, pictures that are coming from the users, not from the Shutterstock pictures of call centers and everything like that. All the content that is provided by people, we are trying to uh, crowd generate them in order to allow that we control what the, the, the government should actually have in their, in their uh, public domain. And just to quote one of the Jimmy Wales who said that, you know, he's super supportive of the events that uh, uh, encouraged the editing the Wikipedia and uh, he liked the initiative that we took in terms of bringing together all the Wiki chapters from the Balkans, all the, the government sector, civil society and everybody to in order to, to get to the point on where we want to go. Then we said, it's got to be something about the apps. It's got to be something about the application for the phone, for the web that could people create and bring more transparency. So we challenged everybody to create uh, apps for the National Museum, Ministry of Finance, that will show how much the budget spending from the government, corruption reporting, election monitoring, points of interest for the, for the country, civic journalism, games, and economic driver. And in simple terms, we are pushing the open, transparent uh, government and society on the web with the project that we did. And AppCam was pretty successful. We had 13 apps emerging in a really short of time. They all went and uh, they are all going and pr pr producing what we asked for in terms of like uh, as much as information possible you get and you feed back the, the institution that were, for example, anti-corruption institution and all of this other stuff. And the reward, of course, all this is good. We elect the best app to go to the Barcelona to the Mobile World Congress. And this is another uh, motivation for people to actually to get rewarded in the business terms as well in the, in the community engagement and everything. This all led us during all these past years to the project we are finally doing and finally got approval from the, from the government in terms of for us to let to change, to bring a website on which actually people write about the, the, the government website. So uh, the portal which is uh, uh, eKosovo will be A to Z for the government, it's getting everything from the starting from the how to ap apply for the job, getting certification in the school, everything A to Z what is about the country will be. And this will be all crowdsourced from the people. So there will no, be, there will no, no uh, government employee will, will actually be responsible for this because it will all will come from the people. And this of course is in a, in a criteria line with the open government partnership 
on which encourage everybody to open up the government and, uh, and, and, uh, act, and uh, let other people to actually participate in it. You know, the, I try and I'm trying to make the, the conversation here pretty short because I'm not revealing also the negative aspects when you work with the government that are, you know. Of course, there are all delays and mismanagement from the public sector affects every move that we do in the project. But when you have a, such a strong power of the crowd that is actually engaging every day and try to bring the new image for the, for the, for the country, then you can call, does this actually is the website of the government or is not anymore? In fact, this is a website of, the, of its own people who, who write content for their own people. With this, we are aiming to stop the ministerial departments and ministerial because I, as far as I remember the last time we checked, we had like around 14 ministers and something like 28 vice ministers, you know. If I could replace every vice minister with one content creator from the civil society that will come and, and, and work and give information and, and transparency to the public, that is our goal with a, with a e-project like, like this one and a government partnership. So this one actually will aim to integrate into one simple website and cross-source that open government in accordance with the government open government open government partnership criteria, which is about transparency, it's about uh, reporting financial, reporting cor up to corruption, and uh, access to information. And also we do provide tools that we created during the, during the app camp in terms of like people that want to build on top things, something, they can create these tools, and then the government every time is relying to this, and, um, and I'm thrilled to say like, you know, the, the support they, they actually get, because at the end of the end, they gave up. They see, they read every day. They see that if they don't open the doors for us to let to do it and actually manage in terms of in a good way, the moment they block the door, they're gonna, they're gonna just fail. Because they failed in the beginning, we won, and now slower and slower. Uh, and the integration and publication tools that we are providing with this platform helps them to reach more um, uh, voices in terms of like when they are about to give some online polling for something. Let's say like, uh, do you want to have a certain park or do you want to have certain, uh, certain idea implemented? And the, the government finally is seeing that if, if seeing the, the other side of what can, it, can, it, can uh, actually contribute. Let me give you an example it's really shortly here. Big corporate companies around the West, in the Western world, they are doing something which is pretty unique, scary, I would say, but promising. If you see today, let's call it, and, and one corporate called Vodafone. They do have, let's say, uh, a board members, super board members, like chairman and everything. They are starting to form the young board members of the corporates. Let's say uh, they are like 15 year olds, 17 year olds of guys that actually never, uh, they were born in the digital, digital technologies. They, are, they were there from the beginning and they are now, uh, they have a different approach on what the telecommunication will look, let's say in, uh, in some, some years from now. So they are forming these parallel board memberships in terms of like hearing the voice of the, of the new generation and then letting the, the old board to, to get feed and inputs all the time from this new generation. The same is trying some initiatives through the government. You know, the government is actually making, call it virtual board members in terms of like hearing the voices. And VK Academy, App Camp, all this, you know, open ECDL tells them that this is where they have to listen and this is where they listen. So we were pretty thrilled to continue uh, working with them in terms of like feeding all the time into, uh, the different project that actually helps them uh, directly in terms of and helps not only them but helps the people that you know because the governments at the end are the, the servants that are, have to serve the country. So just because we are in the, in the early launch of the of the eKosovo portal, uh, years to come we are planning that we that actually if other countries will follow and will do whatever uh, the same as we are doing and we'll actually, we can create some virtual peers. So in the next, let's say 10 years, um, diplomatic relation with the country would matter as internet relations with the country rather than, you know, uh, politicians traveling to each other 
as I was inspired by some of the talks uh, yesterday that actually they calculate how much cost they have and they do in terms of like just traveling and shaking hands and, and reading, you know, template press releases rather than actually giving these resources to the people actually and, and create more uh, bridges between countries and, uh, by participating all in a, in, a, in, a, in a transparent and basically in a mutual agreed content that is, uh, that is around us. So if you have any questions, I will likely be answered. But apart from that, I would like to thank you for attention and for the uh, patience that you had to wait for me. Thank you.